All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Ben Schubert. I am a filmmaker based in Vancouver, BC. And today we are talking about the C70 versus the C200 and which camera is right for you and what you're looking for. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about what camera should people be buying, the C70 or the C200? And these are very similar, but different cameras. And they have different benefits that, you know, work for different people. So you gotta ask yourself, what's your problem? Hmm? What's wrong? Well, you need either of these cameras. If your answer is, I need a camera that's a really great camera system, that's a professional system that I can grow into, you know, something like full-size XLRs, raw workflow, and great ergonomics for, you know, shooting, then that's the C200. I feel like that's the best definition for it. But if you're coming from a mirrorless camera and you want something that works and feels like a mirrorless, but like is way more powerful and has a really, really great sensor, then the C70 is something that makes more sense for you probably. And we'll get into that. Okay, so just for context with this video, I bought a C200 in the spring. So the C300 Mark III was announced and I was debating between the C300 and the C200 and trying to figure out which direction I would go with. I went with a C200 because I also wanted to upgrade my still hybrid camera to an R5 because that is the camera combination that works best for what I do, right? I like to have a dedicated video camera and a dedicated hybrid camera that can do, you know, video and photos. So that is the direction I went. Otherwise, I think if I was just doing video, I probably would have gone with the C300 Mark III. But, you know, at the time it was twice the price of the C200 and the C70 had not been announced yet. Now, this is, fast forward a few months, C70 has been announced. It's popular. It's doing great. Am I tempted to sell my C200 and get a C70? Not really. Uh, not, not at all, in fact. And like the C70 seems like a really great camera, but I'm really happy with my C200. Like, I really like what it can do. It's kind of the perfect range for everything that I do in a professional capacity. Very happy with that camera, but, and to me it kind of just seems like a waste of time and effort and money to pay more money for a camera that's fairly similar just to do a minor upgrade. And so I'm pretty happy with my C200. And I think honestly, if I was to upgrade, it would be to something like a C300, C500, as opposed to, you know, going laterally to a C70. So that is just like my context. That is where I'm at with my camera decisions. And so let's dig in and see what the differences are and what might make sense for you. So to start off with C200, older camera now, and that camera has, you know, it has an 8-bit codec. It's not great. You can record 8-bit to a recorder. It's okay. It's probably good if you're doing just like lots of long bulk recording, events, speeches, people talking, stuff that needs to go on YouTube, you know, or like it needs to go online, but it doesn't need to be amazing. Like, you can get a good image out of the 8-bit, but it's hard to work with in post. So it is what it is. And I wouldn't get the C200 for the 8-bit codec necessarily. Now the next thing that the C200 has is the RAW. And that's a 12-bit RAW and a 10-bit RAW when you're shooting in 60 frames per second. And I have the C200 and I love the RAW capabilities. Right? I love what you can do with the RAW. I love working with the RAW, but that is a personal preference that might not work for what you want to do. Now, the other thing with shooting is the C200 comes with Pro IO. So that means things like SDI. It means full-size XLR cables. Um, it has full-size HDMI, which the C70 has as well. But just between that and the ergonomics and the way this camera is set up, this camera is set up for professional use with, you know, professional teams. So for me, the importance of having full-size XLRs 
comes to reliability. Anytime you add an adapter, there's a risk of failure. And so I like to have full size so that I know that my risk of failure is limited to the XLR cables. And that's something that I can swap out um, on location, either with my own or if the location is providing some, that's an option as well. And now with the C200 ergonomics, you got the weight. It's a heavier camera, so it means that it's gonna be more stable when you're doing handheld work. Now with the C70, the real benefit behind getting this camera is that DGO sensor. So if you're not familiar with the dual gain output sensor, from a simplified perspective, what it allows you to do is it just lets you get better detail in shadows and highlights in really high contrast scenes. So if you're shooting outdoors and there's a lot of shadows and there's bright sunlight, it lets you get more detail in both of those ranges. And how it does that is it basically runs two signals from the sensor that get processed differently. One signal processes it for the shadows, one signal processes it for the highlight, and then those two get processed together into a single image, which gives you that higher dynamic range. Now, as for IO with the C70, it doesn't have things like the SDI out. Um, it only has a full-size HDMI out, and the XLR ports are mini XLR, which is like totally fine for a lot of people's uses. If you're coming to the cinema camera world from mirrorless cameras and you really don't interact with XLRs a lot, then probably mini XLRs are not gonna be a big deal for you, right? Maybe you just use a lav now and again, maybe a shotgun mic at some times, but maybe your main mic that you're used to using is something like, you know, Rode VideoMic Pro or the Deity D3 and it's just gonna plug in through a little headphone jack, then you know what? You're not gonna worry about those inputs. They're gonna be secondary things that you look at sometimes and you know, those are nice to have options for you, right? You know when you need full XLR and you know, and you might not know when you don't. So for me, I know I like to have full size XLR, so that's something that's important to me. If you're not sure, then you probably don't. And you can probably just get away with the mini XLR cables. So that's definitely up to you. Um, now, one thing that is really good about this output for this camera is that full size HDMI cable. So one of the big differences between the C70 and the C200 is that the C200 HDMI system is limited to 8-bit. That's a hardware thing. It cannot be changed. It cannot be upgraded. They just cheaped out on hardware for the HDMI out. And so that's why it'll never be 10-bit. Whereas with the C70, I don't know if they cheaped out, but I think prices came down for them to just throw it in. So it's a 10-bit signal out that's uncompressed. So if you're gonna record out from the C70 through HDMI into an inch of five, or similar recorder, you're gonna get an uncompressed 10-bit signal that can be recorded in ProRes. And that is a really, really great option because ProRes is one of the easiest codecs for a computer to manage and to edit with, especially Macs. Um, H.264 and H.265 can be a bit of a pain. So that brings us to the internal codec for the C70, and there's a few of them. There's an XAVC, there's H.264, and H.265. Generally, I would recommend shooting in the XAVC, so I don't know if certain kinds of recording scenarios are recorded in different formats, so, so I don't know if the 4K 120 is only in H.265, or you can do it in XAVC. So now in terms of recording modes between these two cameras, so the C200 will shoot in RAW up to, you know, 12-bit in 30p, or it'll shoot 60p in 10-bit in RAW, which is a really great codec. The images look really, really nice. I really love that codec. I really love the RAW. I really love what I'm getting out of it. To be honest, I have not shot personally with the C70. I've graded some images from you know, the XAVC out of the C300 Mark III, which gives me just like a tiny 
tiny glimpse of what the C70 will be and like there's a lot of really great things about that that I've seen. I haven't dug enough into it to really definitively say there's some things I really like about that codec and you know it only goes so far in my opinion but for 90% of what people are shooting there's so much that you could do with it and it would be a huge benefit to what you're doing I'm sure. Now the C70 on the other hand Again, I haven't shot with this camera. I'm not super familiar with it. Um, from what I know, it shoots 4K, 10-bit, up to 120 frames per second. It does it in a 10-bit format. The image looks great from what I've seen, and having that DGO sensor would be really, really nice for a lot of different scenarios, especially for like bright daylight when you're shooting, you know, with a really harsh sun and you've got some really deep shadows in your scene and you need to like have detail in both things, I think that'll be a huge benefit for you if that's what you're going for. But whether you need that is entirely up to you and where you're at right now. So now let's talk about the post side of things because this is another part of what is important about, you know, the way you're doing your work, right? Are you, going to be meticulous about you know your grading your editing are you the one who's overseeing the workflow is this um is having as much detail and information super important to you so workflow is important and the post workflow that you're going through is an important decision on which camera you go with because the c200 i love that image i love that what you can get out of it but file sizes are heavy and if drives are an important expense that you know you're trying to keep down then the c200 raw probably isn't something that you should be looking at personally it's not something i'm worried about i build drives into the costs of working with clients so it's not something i deal with i all my editing happens on my mac pro which is like it's an old 2009 Mac Pro, but I have a ton of storage, right? I have eight terabytes of fast NVMe SSD storage. Then I have something like 20 terabytes of hard drive space that I'm, you know, offloading projects to. And then plus the drives I use to archive footage. So I have a ton of drives. I am not worried about storage, so I don't care about the space. I care about the quality and what I can get out of that, but that's my interest and my needs. If you're someone who's working off a laptop, has to have quick turnaround and that sort of thing, you might want to go with the C70. So the benefits of the C70, I mean, if you have my system, a C70 would also be great, but let's get into this. So. The post side of the C70, the benefits there are it's a lot smaller files to work with. So if you're on limited storage, right, maybe you're working off a laptop or maybe you're just not wanting to take up all that space and maybe you just don't need a raw workflow. Maybe it just does not matter for you. The images that you're going to get off the C70 are going to be really great. There's a lot that you can do with them and they're a lot smaller than the raw files that are coming out of the C200, like a lot. So, and in terms of drive costs, one thing that we haven't talked about that is very real cost between both of these cameras is media, right? So the C200, if you wanna shoot raw, you gotta get CFast cards, and CFast cards are not cheap. They are super expensive. Um, you're looking at maybe I don't know, I feel like it's like $100 a gigabyte. Like I spent $1,000 on a one terabyte CFast card and that seemed like a deal. Uh, you can also get solid pods which record to SSDs which is a much cheaper option. The C70 shoots to SSD cards which are, you know, pretty cheap comparatively. Plus you can output an uncompressed 10 bit signal to a recorder and so if you're recording to full size SSDs, then that's even cheaper. It's definitely worth looking at 
the whole package of camera, you know, what entirely you're gonna be paying for. Is it just the camera and you have all the media you need already, or is the media gonna be included in the cost of the camera? Definitely price out the entirety of what you're gonna need to get that camera running to a spot that you like so that you know what you're actually getting into. So both of these cameras are Super 35 sensor cameras, which means it's a 1.6 crop, but the C200 uh, uses EF mount lenses and the C70 uses RF mount lenses. And what the benefit is with that is not only can you use RF lenses, which are great, but you can use adapters to use the EF lenses but one of the adapters that Canon is selling is essentially a speed booster, which allows you to get, you know, a full frame image onto a Super 35 sensor. And that only works with the C70. So that's one perk there is you can actually get a full frame image out of your lenses. I'm sure you can find a lot of videos about speed boosters versus non speed boosters and all the like issues there. So go down that rabbit hole. I'm not getting into it. So let's talk about price. So both of them are the same price if you buy them brand new. Now, the C200 has a C200B, and if you're buying that one brand new, that's $1,000 cheaper. It, you don't get the viewfinder, you don't get the monitor, you don't get the top handle, but lots of people choose that one because they have you know, cages and top handles and monitors that they're gonna use anyways, and they don't need the Canon monitor, which is hard to see in the sunlight as it is so that is definitely an option to bring the price down on the c200 side and the other thing is that because so many people are buying c70s the market is kind of flooded right now with c200s so if you're more on a budget and you don't want to spend a ton of money but you want to get into the cinema camera market this is a great time because there's a lot of C200s that are being sold for fairly inexpensive. Now, Canon cinema cameras keep their value, which is a huge benefit. So if you go with the C70, you know that you're gonna be able to sell it for a pretty good price uh, in a couple years. But if you are looking to just get into the cinema camera market and you want a more inexpensive camera that is very capable, then a use C200, you can get those for a really good price that are way below what you would buy them new. And you know, these cameras, you can find them in really good condition. I don't know how badly you would find a C200 because frankly, these cameras tend to get babied and they tend to, they're kind of bulletproof and not a lot goes wrong with them. So it would be definitely do your due diligence make sure that the camera you get is in working order. So that's just something to consider. You know, if price is an object for you and what you're trying to do, if you're getting into a cinema camera and you're like, the C70 is great, but it's just like slightly out of my reach, you should probably definitely go for like finding a used cheaper C200. I think that'd be a really great option. But yeah, as I said before, definitely price everything out that you're gonna need to get this camera working and make sure that that total price actually works within your budget so that you're not, you know, stretching out farther than you need to. Because it may be one thing where you buy a cheaper C200, but you also have to buy CFast cards, then you're already over the price of a C70 with some SD cards that are good enough. So definitely do more research. Do not let this be the last video you see on the subject. Um, Cause there's other opinions out there that are really great and yeah, I'm just dropping the ocean. All right, so if you found that video helpful, give it a thumbs up. I'd love to know what direction you're leaning towards, if it's the C200 or the C70, which makes sense for what you're doing and why. I'd love to hear about that in the comments, so drop them down there. And otherwise, I'll talk to you next time.